you believe that Jesus can change everything? Yeah. Fear has to bow. Yeah. Chains are broken today. How many believe that? Yeah. Glory to God for that. And uh, I want to praise God for each one of your lives and uh, the ability and the opportunity he gives us, right, to be here in his presence. God is here in a special way. What a great worship we had today. How many praise God for that? Thank you, guys. Great worship. The worship team allows us to get connected with God. And uh, I appreciate always when our worship team does an amazing job. It just fills me up, and I'm able to praise God for that in this hour. So I also want to just take this moment before we enter into the Word of God, because God has something special for, for us. I just want to announce that we've had a banquet this weekend. A banquet. Last night, Danny Gomez shared at our last service, 6 p.m. This morning, Luis Manrique shared at the 8 o'clock service. And at 11 o'clock, Pastor Jorge will be sharing at our 11 o'clock service. And at 12.30, Danny Gomez is going to do it again. So I want to invite you, those that speak Spanish, right? There is a banquet at CDO Church, and you are able to receive a feast in this weekend. So take the opportunity to do that, all right? If you're able to stay for the next service, Praise God. Let's go be part with what the Lord is doing using our brother, our pastor, Jorge Garcia, and as well as Danny Gomez. And uh, the Word of God shares with us, and I'm going to introduce uh, this young man that has some very important news. But Jesus talks about that as we come before him as children, they will inherit the kingdom of God. And I want to invite this, this young man, and I believe he's young. I think he's younger than me. But this young man that has taken the calling of being one that leads the children ministry and has some very, very important news to share with us today. And I want you to welcome our brother Leo Alcantara, if you'd come up here. Thank you, my brother, for that introduction. Hi, everyone. How, how are you doing, City of Church? Good, good, good. Um, it was like a couple of years, a couple of years ago, I was on the bank uh, with my dad. He was waiting for me, sitting in the chair. And while I was on the line, uh, he noticed, he spotted a, a, a young woman with his, with his kid, and, and he uh, uh, got his eyes to her and started blinking like this. And the lady was like, what are you doing? Like, she wasn't shocked because what my dad was doing. And then he said to her, see that, uh, referring to me, see that uh, man that is standing on the line? And, and the lady answered, yes. They said, that's my son. I remember when my son was like your son, like about five years old, it was like a, a blink of an eye. I closed my eyes, I opened the, the eyes again, and he's a grown up man. So what happens is sometimes we lose track of time. Uh, now I'm in the position, I'm on a father, I have two kids, and I'm waiting for the third one. So yeah, thank you, yeah, it's, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's a girl, it's a girl, so praise the Lord. Woo! So, um, but about three months ago, uh, I was admitted to emergency because I have a massive bleeding about three months ago. And then when the doctors uh, put me in all those uh, CT scanners, all those machines and everything, uh, uh, they give me a diagnosis. I was very worried about what's going on because I was at home when that happened with my two kids. My wife was, uh, I couldn't serve that day because I was in, in excruciating pain, so I couldn't come to serve. So uh, as, as I was at home, so uh, my, my wife, after she was serving, take me to emergency. And the doctors said um, that I was, I have something in, in my intestines. It's called uh, diverticulosis. So I was in shock because uh, I, was, I was so scared that what's going to happen. I have two kids, and I, my, my wife is pregnant with another one. So my life changed three months ago uh, because something happened uh, in, inside of me. After that day, after that day, my life uh, uh, and all that I have to eat every day changed completely. It was like a switch. So one day I was eating burritos, menudo, everything. I was enjoying, oh, my God, I was so happy, you know, to enjoy that. It, it was good. But the next day I was eating vegetables and all those kind of things that sometimes we know we have to eat it, but we're not, sometimes we'd include in our diet like every day. So what I'm trying to tell you with all this is my life changed until something triggered that I had to have something, I had to do something in my life regarding my health. So at that point, God spoke to me in that day because I had to change. I had to change because I have a family. I have, I, I need to be healthy for, for my, uh, for my, 
for my health, um, for my family, for, for the minister, for everybody. I, I was like, oh my God, I had to do something. But sometimes in life, we get caught in all the things we have to do every day, work, school, and then we don't notice how fast goes the time. And then when my life changed like that, um, it's, it's something that it was really, I was really, uh, I, in, in that moment, I got to do something. I got to do something. I got to take, take care of the time that I have. So with this, I want to tell you something. I don't know if you heard yesterday, a young man about 21 years old in El Paso, in El Paso Texas, decided, decided to take the lives of 20 people. So that was something that probably shocked everybody uh, today because they're still investigating that, that incident. But what can you imagine a young man of 21 years old took that decision? Something happened in their life that now, at that moment, that trigger, that thing and, and, and their family, something before happened when he was a kid, when he was growing up, when he was in school. If we go back in time, something happened. Something happened. And as a parent, we need to be aware that these days we're living very dangerous times. So there's laws right now that put in danger our kids. So I want to tell you something. City of Church has this program called Awana. And I want to encourage you, all of you parents that have young kids, to enroll your, your, your kiddos to this program because that is the discipleship for your kids, for the future, for those kind of situations that we want to plant the seed every Tuesday. So every Tuesday, when you bring your children to a, that program so your kids have that seed in their hearts and you parents are part of that program because you participate with them every time when you help them to learn those verses. So you're part of that construction, that, that, that shield that, that you need for your family. So I encourage you, I invite you guys, if you have kiddos from 2 to 14, take this amazing opportunity. And this, as you heard, this program costs only 20 cents, 20 cents. So, and you say, why 20 cents? I heard it was 70. Yes, if you save every day 20 cents, in 365 days, you're going to have $70 that you can have for enrolling your kid. This is an investment. And if you're a kind of person, kind of family, that are based your, uh, uh, your expenses in a budget, just put, put one more uh, uh, line there called investment. And then put a one. This is an investment. It's not an expense. So you can have, we can help you to grow that shield in your family. So you're welcome to bring your children every Tuesday so it will, it will have an amazing time and your family is going to be blessed because with this times come and unfortunately all we experience all those kind of situations and our kids they're going to experience that they can say no to those situations they can say no I know a God that is good a God that is merciful a God that protects me doing those kind of things is wrong I reject to do that in the name of Jesus so that seed it will be planted and, and, you're, and, you're, and you're a kid and you're a part of it. I, I invite you guys that you take your, this opportunity and enroll your kids. God bless you. Enjoy the message. Thank you. Thank you, Leo. And yes, the graduation was amazing for Awana. I don't know if you guys were there, but our son graduated from the Awana program and it was a true blessing seeing our son come home with memorized verses and telling us a little bit about what he shared. So. So it's a blessing to, to, be, to have, see your, your child go through that uh, program and be blessed by God by it. So today's message, as we're ready to dive into today's word, is titled, In With The New. Okay, Out With The Old. Looks like, looks like everybody got their bulletin, or it must be behind me or something. It's based on Matthew 9, 14 through 17. And you know, every time you, know, you prepare God's word, and this happens to me quite a bit, that as I'm preparing God's word that he has called me to do, I understand things and situations happen right there and then that allows me to understand that, okay, I'm on the right track. And I'm going to just give you, share with you a little testimony, okay? About a month ago, our son Ezekiel comes to, comes to us, and first he comes to his mother because he knows that his mother, he can get more things from her than he can from the dad. So he comes to his mother and, you know, pleading with her because uh, school's going to start asking for a brand new pair of Air Force Ones, all right? So he not only wants a pair of Air Force Ones, he wants them in a particular color, right? 
So I tell him, I said, look it. You know, I know you want some Air Force Ones, but your dad has Air Force Ones in his closet. And he doesn't even wear them. Go ahead and use them. He's like, Dad, they don't even fit. What do you mean go use them? I said, eventually your foot's going to get bigger and you're going to grow into it. Right? You see, I had Air Force One for the last 10 years. So long, my Air Force Ones are in pristine shape, but due to being in a humid spot in my closet, the rubber started turning yellow. I still rock them like that. I don't care. But I told my son, hey, look, I got some Air Force One for you. Hey, you want them? Check it out. Boom. The reason I say this is because I know my son. His son, my son, my son, his shoes last about a week or two weeks. And he's asking for a new pair of shoes that are Air Force Ones that are about 100 what? Yeah, don't tell me because I didn't even pay for my wife this. 100 and something, right? And he wants these shoes. I said, no, check it out, man. You, you, You use your shoes. Dad, dad. Dad, I need these shoes, man. And you know what? He wanted them so bad, he started shedding tears. Long story short, Ezekiel got his way. (laughs) And just yesterday, as I'm preparing the message, he comes in from the grocery store with his mom, comes in, and his his sister, Tatiana, my daughter, tells him, don't crease them. And then she keeps moving. I said, what do you mean, don't crease them? He says, Dad, check it out. Takes off the shoes. He says, if I bend them, they're going to make a crease right here, and they're not going to look good anymore. I said, what? So, so is that why you're walking like this? Because you don't want that crease? Is that why? And I said, man, check it out. If you're going to take care of shoes like that, you get another one next week. Right? Because this is a man that's taking care of his shoes. They're going to last the 10 years that my Air Force ones lasted. And I thought I'd share that with you because we're coming in with something new today, right, and leaving the old behind. And I want you to listen to this message as I prepared it, and I want, as as this is the introduction to today's message, you see, in the days we are living in today, there is a, there's constant changes being made to the living circumstances we are living in, based on laws, financial situations, relationships we have, and the list goes on. You see, change is difficult. Because many times it means starting over from the beginning or changing the beliefs in what we have believed for so long. You see, which for many may be hard to swallow. You see, an old mindset will affect a person when a new life is presented to such a person in a negative way, prohibiting that person to have success in his or her own life. You see, we see this constantly in church. Constantly because people give themselves to the Lord and the backlash or resistance they receive from close friends and family. I don't know if you received that in your life. That as you got closer to God, people started criticizing. People started talking about you. People started uh, speaking behind your back. I don't know if you got closer to God, people started falling off from being on your friends list in your contacts. As you got closer to God, people started talking about you, about what are you doing? Are you serious? You used to hang with this crowd. Now you're hanging with that crowd. You used to be a person that was in the streets. Now you're an hallelujah, like my grandpa used to say. Let me share you a testimony. My my aunt is here, and she can prove it. My grandpa, Remedios Sandoval, that is now in the presence of God, this this is a testimony that I share in Encounters. And some of you guys that have been to Encounters know about this. You see, as a young boy, I would go visit my parents and uh, my grandparents in Tecate. As a young boy, five, six years old, and I would go visit them, and we would be on our way to Tecate. It was a long trip. I was dizzy by the time I got there because you know all the roads, right? It was already dizzy like this. Like, well, hurry up! And as we got there, my parents went to go visit their parents, but every time we were greeted by my grandfather, and he would say, "I vienen los hallelujahs." Here comes the hallelujahs. In a way that he was mocking, yeah. But in a way that he was laughing, yeah. But you know, my dad, very calm, he would just say, ¿Está bien, pa? ¿Cómo está? How you doing, dad? How you been? He would never take that in the wrong way. And this is over years of him doing this to us, laughing, you know, mocking our parents. But in one of those times, as my dad went to go visit him, and my dad was a person of prayer, a person that would come before God continuously, My dad would constantly say, Señor Jesús, praise the Lord. It was his way of connecting with God in the moments of his situation that he was living in. But every day he was always saying, Señor Jesús, 
praise the Lord. You see, Romans 10, 13 says, for whoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And in one of these times, my grandpa heard my dad say this, and he said, Señor Jesús, playing around, mocking him, playing around. Well, you know what? It wasn't so much playing around because months from then, we went to visit him, and you know what he said? What do I have to do to be baptized? You see, when he called upon the name of the Lord, our God doesn't play. You may be playing, but the Spirit came in him and said, ooh, I need to make some changes. And you know what we did? Oh, all you got to do is find some water, and we'll submerge you in that water. You know what he did? You know what he did, my grandpa? He got in the vehicle, a man that used to drink, used to smoke for many, many years, a man that didn't want nothing with him. You know what he did? He jumped in the vehicle, came down to our house on Madison and Adams and University. If you guys know where that's at, we had a little house. And you know what? My dad started pouring water in the bathtub, right? This man jumps in, sits down, and he starts calling upon the name of the Lord, saying, Lord, remove these cigarettes that I have. See, baptism is a declaration before everybody that you're leaving an old man behind and you're resurrecting to a new life. And that's what today's message is about. He understood at that moment because although he was playing around, he received something new in his life and he had to make a change to remove the old ways of his life. Today's base message, passage today, we find it in Matthew 9, 14 through 17. It says as this. Then John's disciples came and asked him, how is it that we and the Pharisees fast often? But your disciples do not fast. Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? You see, the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. Then they will fast. You see, no one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst. The wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. I you to close your eyes. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, in this very hour, I ask that your spirit be amongst us today, that the word that is shared today may bring revelation, wisdom, and understanding, recognizing that the word that today is shared allows us to make certain modifications in our life, leaving the old behind and resurrecting to a new life that we have in Jesus Christ. In your name I pray. Amen and amen. You see, in today's base passage, Jesus is sitting with his disciples. And as early tradition describes Matthew as the author, he writes presenting a scene, allowing the reader to view John the Baptist's disciples, who was in prison at the time, questioning the actions of Jesus' disciples from not fulfilling the religious law under Moses of fasting. Jesus' own words in Matthew 5, 17 says as this, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law, or the prophets, I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. In other words, Jesus is saying, don't question the one who created the law and is the only one who can fulfill it. Question yourselves before questioning others. I had a moment in my life that I was questioned many times mm -hmm. about what I believe and what my faith was in. I was questioned many times in front of a, in front of a court, a court, courthouse. I don't know if you guys have ever, somebody here been in court, been in front of a judge. I heard a couple, mm, that means, yeah, in front of a judge, man, you know, one of the worst feelings is to be questioned by a judge, especially a judge that maybe has a lot of knowledge and studies and knows the laws and all this stuff, and he comes at you with certain, like, what did you say? And you don't know how to answer back. I had an incident, man, when I was in the Navy at 18 years old that I remember clear as yesterday because it impacted my life. I was 18 years old riding with the friends down the street in Virginia Beach because I was stationed in Virginia. And as we were driving, we were drinking those adult beverages, right? And I'm sitting in the back seat, and the police pulls up on us, and we get a ticket for drinking with an open container, which in Virginia is a misdemeanor. 
So my court date comes up. I'm a single man, no kids, right? Thinking that it's just a misdemeanor slap on the wrist. I get in front of the judge, and the judge looks at me and gives me five years for a misdemeanor. I said, what? Start, they put the, put, put, the, uh, put the handcuffs on me, take me to the back, and I start seeing all these big dudes. I'm like, man, what's going on here? As so I'm sitting in there, I was like, man, this lady just accused me of, of, of open container. I'm five years? You know what happened there? The Lord was with me, man. The Lord was with me. Because although I was false accused and the time that I was given was crazy, that moment in time, God was with me. You know why? Because people were praying for me. And I came out of that place. They came back, took me out, and said, you know what? We made a mistake with you. All you got to do is pay a fine. I almost, I right there, I, I said, Lord Jesus, thank you for her saving me. From five years to a fine, I don't know if you they would take that, but I'll take that any day. <laughs> I ain't doing no five years for a misdemeanor, please. But you know what? J Jesus was, was accused of many different things for him not obtaining the law or doing things against the law. You see, Jesus came to fulfill the law, but to remove the law practices, living in a legalistic society with Judaism was involved. Where there's Sanhedrin, Jewish authorities calling against, talking against certain Christians, being persecuted in those times. You see, Jesus was continuously falsely accused and misinterpreted by the Pharisees and the religious le leaders based on not fulfilling religious laws. And those false accusations led up to his death. In verse 14, the disciples of John the Baptist questioned Jesus of his disciples for not fasting. Look at, uh, you're going to see this on the uh, projection. As a cultural concept, fasting was defined as the following. The practice of abstaining from food. This could be done as an expression of remorse for wrongdoing, as an expression of mourning for a loss or a spiritual discipline meant to help one focus on spiritual matters. You see, Jesus answers using specific words of how can and no one and neither, referring to the complete impossibilities to their accusation. Jesus answers with the following parable. He says, how can the guest of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, then they will fast. Listen to this, man. Look what's going on right here. These guys are more worried about Jesus' disciples fasting because not living up to the cultural concept of what was fasting. You see, they were, Jesus tells them, why is the bridegroom putting the concept of new life and death, of mourning? Why are you guys criticizing or causing this uh, a mourning issue? Why, you, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. You see, Jesus refers in a particular way using a wedding and the word mourning as a contrast between new life and death. Jesus was introducing newness to a deadly theology and a radical way of life. We understand that when we fast, yeah, we stop eating, we stop drinking, we stop eating carne salad burritos, carne salad fries, we stop, we stop eating certain foods. But it's not to stop eating to lose weight uh, as they did. It's not to stop eating to mourn for somebody as they were mourning for John the Baptist who was in prison because they were his disciples. It was not for them to do their practices under the law of Moses. No, today we have an understanding that when we fast, it's because we come connected with God. Because God is our strength. God is our whole. God is our everything. So when we fast, we come connected with God. So when Jesus answered them, he lets them know, check it out. These men are with Jesus right now, their Savior. They're sustained. They're food. They're nourishment. They're fasting because they're here in front of me. Quit trying to bring these laws against what they're doing because their fasting is right now while they're witnessing Jesus Christ. And the miracles that he is doing at that moment in time. I don't know if you follow this. But he's letting them understand that he is with them as their fast. As their whole, as their everything. You see, our fasting today, and I repeat this again, is subduing the flesh from its desire and activating the spirit. Which desires the flesh from its, which desires the worshiping of God, excuse me. 
the disciples had gone, the disciples had the God man in front of them who was and is our daily sustain. You see, Jesus continues the parable. See, he, he lets them know. Jesus continues the parable using two references in bringing understanding for, to the old form of Judaism into a new life that Jesus represented. Let's review this. It's in your outline. Number one. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Let me repeat that again. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. You see, what he is saying here, you do not grab a new pair, a, a new cloth on an old garment that has a hole that has not been washed and shrunken to the size that it's going to fit and cover that hole. You do not do that. It's not logical to do that. Why? One is because you're mixing two different materials into one, one garment. And that is not possible to do because sooner or later, that patch is going to peel itself away. A lot of times, we try to mix materials into one in our lives. We try to mix different things, different beliefs, different actions, different habits into our life that we have now received in Jesus Christ. You see, you don't put silk with cotton, or do you? Huh? Do you put polyester with cotton? Right? I remember when I wash my clothes, sometimes I get upset, right? Because you get a, you get a 100% cotton shirt, and you don't wash it right, what happens? Or you don't dry it right? It fits Elias. <laughs> right? It fits little man. Right? You see, Jesus is letting them know, see, this is, this is not logical. What, 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 are you what, what are you talking about coming against what I'm trying to do here right now? I'm, I'm the one that's trying to bring new things to your life. And you're bringing some crazy old things into what's been used and abused in this legalistic society that you're living in. What, what are you trying to do? I'm the one that's bringing something fresh, new, and up to date. Why are you trying to bring old ways, old habits to today's promises and tomorrow's future? Why? You see, two lives improperly sewn together is what this means. You see, you're sewing two different things together. It's not going to work. It's not going to work because sooner or later, it's going to break away because they were not made for each other. Have you ever seen a person that squats down like this, right? Woo. And then, clink, right behind the tears. Notice how that happened, right? They, they lean over to grab something and then, oops, oh my gosh. What's going on? And you know what? They take that clothes, they take it back home, they put it in the closet, and the next day they grab it, and he's like, oh, you know what? Maybe I can make those into shorts. Yeah, let's cut those off and make them into shorts. Right? You start wearing them again, and you're like, you know what? Now I got to save these, man, till they're, till they're done. And you start getting holes all over the place, but you're still using them. And eventually you love them so much that you start putting old material on there, covering up the holes, covering up the patches. You say, I don't care, I'm going to still wear them. But you know what? What happens when a cold day comes and you got shorts on? You ain't got the right garment for the right weather. Woo. You ain't wearing the right thing because you're putting other material that's not made for that garment. You're putting other things in the society in your life that wasn't made for you to protect yourself against the weather of this world. Number two, for the patch will pull away from the garment. What does this mean? Living a new life with old habits. Right? I don't, I don't know, man. You, you come to, before God. People come before God. They start praising God. They start loving God. They enjoy what God is doing. But, man, those old habits keep creeping up. <laughs> creeping up on them. Creeping up and just you are destroying their life. Destroying their life. So what does this garment mean, my brothers and sisters? This garment is a new life in Christ Jesus. This garment... Is something new and fresh, up to date, not outdated. This new life in Jesus Christ, you can't mix other materials with it because it won't work, especially when you dry it. It's going to peel back and create the, 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 the terror to become worse, number three. Making the terror worse is accepting the old. You know what? Sometimes we have that understanding, right? Hey, man. It's already ripped. It's already there. Check it out. Who cares? Let's just keep wearing it. Right? 
It's my way of life. That's how it is. That's how I was born. That's how I was brought into this world. That's how I got to live. It's, it's okay. Let's just keep moving. Keep it moving. Keep it pushing. You're making the tear worst on that garment. Because if the garment is made worst, it will not repel the rain that this world brings. If the garment tear becomes worst, when the hurricane comes and the snow comes, it's not going to do its function that it was, what it was made for. You need to go into your closet today, right? <laughs> go into the closet and take a look at all those clothes, right? Right. And those ones that you love and have for so many years, you need to start taking them off the hanger. Mm -hmm. Take that old clothes off the hanger and bring something new into that closet. The hardest part is getting into the closet. Because you love that closet so much. You love those old habits. You don't care if the tear got worse. You don't want to go in there because you're afraid of repercussion. You're afraid of the outcome of removing that, that, that garment. It's only going to cost you a couple bucks. Right? You need to go in the closet today. God is asking you to go in your closet, deep in your closet. And identify the clothes. The garments that are worn that are not being used correctly, that are not functioning for the weather that is at hand in your life. You see, sometimes, let's check this out. A lot of times we got to do spring cleaning, right? But you know what? We got to do some summer cleaning today, right? Summer, winter, fall, continuous cleaning of our closets. Because the day that it gets cold, my brothers and sisters, the day that it gets real cold outside and you go in that closet, and that old garment is there, and that's the only one hanging on that, whew, you're going to be looking to patch that stuff out because it's too cold outside, man. You're going to be looking for pieces to patch up that old garment. But when you start sewing it, it doesn't hold because it's a different material, my brothers. It's a different material. It's not going to hold. It's not going to stay together, right? Right? I'm speaking to the marriages right here. If we're using old cloths on old garments in our relationship, there's going to be some friction. There's going to be some separation when the things get hard in life. And the sewing of what's there is going to start bundling up because it's not made for that cloth, for that garment. But Jesus is the new garment in your life. He's the newness. So that when you go in the closet, Today in this altar, say, Lord Jesus, let's see what I got there. I got a Louis Vuitton jacket. Ooh, I can't get rid of that. I got a Dolce Gabbana whew, sweater. Whew. I got a chinchilla. Who can't get rid of that. No, 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 no. It, it, ain't, about, it ain't about what you want to get rid of. It's what needs to get rid of. It's what needs to get rid of. You get rid of. Can't hold on to it forever. I know Ezekiel, he, want, he wanted some shoes. I said, hold on to those. No, Dad, I need something new. You want something new? All right, you start cutting the grass today. Huh? Start taking out the trash, mijo. Right? Let's work at it. It takes work to get rid of those old garments. Mm -hmm. It takes more work getting rid of old garments than putting patches on old garments. And sometimes we may think it's so easy to just slap a new cloth, unshrunk cloth, new cloth on an old garment. See, that's just putting a Band-Aid on it, my brothers and sisters. You're just bandaging something that's going to get worse eventually. You're just bandaging something up that really has no sustain, has no, has, has no support for you. You see, as children of the Lord, there are times that we need to go into our closets. Yeah. And remove old garments. Yes. And start with something new and fresh and up to date. I don't know if you're willing to go in that closet today. Yeah, man. Because those garments ain't going to work for too long, man. That old habit, that old ways, that mixing of materials, living two different lives, whew, not going to last too long. Eventually, there's going to come a time where you're going to stumble and fall. And you know what? By God's grace and mercy, Jesus will still be there. But you're not promised. We are not promised tomorrow. Today, we are promised because we're here today. Before the presence of God. Where fear bows and chains break. Right? Number four. 
Now we're going to talk about some vats, wineskins. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. See, there's, this is, this is, look how Jesus talks about this, man. Because, you know, the Bible talks about Jesus being the new wine, right? Something fresh, something new, something up to date. But he talks about the wineskins. And in the antiquity, they would pour wine that had been crushed into a skin of goat. Okay, follow me. Okay? Goat skin. And they would seal it up tight. Shut, close it up tight. Completely. And during the fermentation process, the wine skin would get fatter and fatter and create pressure and pressure till eventually it would, it, would, it would eventually finish the fermentation process and it would be ready to drink. But after doing so many fermentation process in the old wineskin, the, the, the outer barrier of the wineskin would start to get brittle and brittle because it was expanding and contracting, expanding and contracting, expanding and contracting. So eventually that goat skin would start to get brittle and create little cracks on the side. And you know what would happen, right? The wine would be ruined because it would be falling. They would hang them on ropes, on, on, on sticks outside their houses. And they would hold there and they would, you'd see them get fatter and fatter. But what Jesus is saying is do neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. See, this is a mixture of a new life and the old life. See, when, when you would put new wine into an old wineskin, the fermentation process would be interrupted because the outer liner, the barrier of that wineskin was so brittle, creating cracks, that it would burst and ruin all the wineskin. See, if they do, the skins will burst. Number five, these are uncontrollable consequences. Were they able to control that wineskin from being burst? No. After they've added that wine to that old wineskin, no, they were not able to. It was in uncontrollable consequences. Sometimes in life, there are consequences that are uncontrollable because you continue doing the same thing over and over and over, expecting a different result, coming up with the same result, doing things over and over and over, knowing darn well that if you continue doing it, what's going to happen? It's going to burst and you're going to be ruined. So why do it? Why continue doing it? And number five, number six, the wine will run out and the wineskins will be ruined. This is living a life in shambles, making the same mistake over and over. I don't know if you guys have done that before. I know I have. I'll be honest. I made the mistake, same mistake over and over and over. What does the word shambles mean? Disorder. Isn't it a disorder? Or something that is disorganized when the wine is in its fermentation process, ready to be drink and it burst, created to be ruined. Where are you at in your fermentation process? Mm -hmm. Are you ready to drink? Or is your outer line ready to burst? Ready to fall out and be ruined in the society that we live in? Where are you at? Or are you bringing something new every day to your life? Because if you're here, this is where you receive something new. Praise God for that. If you're here, this is where you put new wine into a new wineskin. If you're here, this is where you get to have something new and fresh and up to date. If you're here, it's because the new wine, which represents Jesus Christ, is in this place today. And you know what? He wants to fill you up. He wants to fill you up. Maybe the outer liner is brittle today. But you know what? It's when God restores God renews. God gives a new opportunity. God gives you a new jacket, a new garment. You need to get rid of the old one, man. You need to get rid of that old wineskin. But you know what? Receive today a new jacket. So when you go out in the streets of this world, ain't no storm, ain't no snow, ain't no hell going to affect you continuing on as you march on in this world. Praising God. 
exalting his precious name. You see, as children of the Lord, we need to keep a replenishment of goat skins close so that fermentation process of the new wine in Jesus Christ is not interrupted or ruined by the old ways and habits. Because sometimes, you know what I'm, listen to this, sometimes we, we surround ourselves with new and old wineskins. Listen to this. That represent us. New and old wineskins are around us. And if we are not continuously around them, we are not able to identify if that wineskin is getting brittle or getting ready to burst. But new wine will understand that the fermentation process that is right next to them, and they see a person that is going through difficult times, going through, 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 through separations, going through problems at work, a person that has a new wine goat skin, right, is able to identify the brittleness of his and catch it before it gets ruined. Catch it before it hits the ground. Catch it before it gets ruined in the society we live in today. So I don't know if you're part of the new wineskin or you're still living in the old goat brittle wineskin. But you know what? There's people around here that care about your life. There's people around here that pray for you. There's people around you that want to see you prosper and succeed. There's people around you that are constantly, constantly going to battle, going to war for your life. There's constantly people doing this. And we are here, servants of the Lord, leaders that are here in the house today, have to identify what process of fermentation our congregations in. So when that wine skin does get to a point of getting too brittle, it doesn't go wasted. It doesn't go wasted. We got to capture that, man. Have a container ready, man. Have a container ready. 2 Corinthians 5.17, Paul says, Therefore, those that are in Christ Jesus are new creation. The past is far behind. New things have come. If new things are constantly coming to our lives, woo, we should be those that are ready. Ready, 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 and alert. So with our congregation, people that have, may have some issues, problems, we are there to be there and catch it. Because we have received the new blessings that Jesus Christ has given us. I want you to bow your heads in this hour ask you to if you today can say that you have received a new life in Christ Jesus there should be a continued preservation of your life in with the new and out with the old your new garment may, ne may need to be taken to the cleaners ever so often that is okay keep your body preserved 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says as follows. And the very God of peace himself sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be what? Preserved. Blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. There with your eyes closed. God has spoken to you today. And you have identified areas in your closet that are old ways and old habits and you've been trying to restore that old garment just sitting there rotten in the closet I ask that you open the doors to that closet and you yourself raise your hand to that hanger start taking that clothes, that garment off that hanger start removing it Start taking it off. You don't need it anymore. It's not part, it's not yours anymore. You have a new life today. You have a new beginning. You have a new start. You have something fresh and up to date. You got something better than those Air Force Ones. You got eternal life in Christ Jesus. Picture it. Imagine it. What are you struggling with? Fear, bow. Chains are broken. Addiction, fornication, adultery. Pornography, what are you dealing with? What's in your closet? You can identify it. You can identify it. And once identified, you are able to renounce it. So when you come to this altar, what was shared is manifested here. And you receive freedom. You receive deliverance. You receive healing in your life. I invite you 
to take that step and say, Lord, I've identified what's in my closet. And that garment that's in there, it's in there too long. It's been in there too long. And I'm tired of it. I don't want it anymore. Today, it gets removed from my life. And I don't want it back ever again. May the old habits never come back and affect what Jesus Christ has done already for me. Lord, I pray that in this very...